Okay, folks, it's a Sunday morning here and a bit nippy. It's a bit nippy, but I have a special guest with me here today. I was invited on a permission dig, but uh, this is my youngest son joining me. Peace and blessings to you. So we're gonna see what we can find here. We got a beautiful area here that we're gonna detect. Let's get to it. Levi Barnes and Samuel Chapman established the area that would later become the village of Waterford community on January 1st, 1836, when they obtained water power rights on the Fox River. A dam was built and later a sawmill and flour mill were added, which became the nucleus of Waterford. The village developed as a result of the milling activities and got its name, Waterford, because of its location at the shallow area of the Fox River, where horse-drawn covered wagons could cross. Their families and other settlers soon followed, and in a short time, a thriving village had grown up on the banks of the Fox. Bruce, how are you, man? Good to hey, see you. Good morning, how are you? Doing all right. Happy Sunday morning. Happy Sunday, thanks for the invite. What's up? You said you uh, had some secret about finding silver. Oh, that's right. You, you want to know my secret to finding silver? Yeah, I mean, is it, it a setting? Is it, you know, what are you? What are you, a, a silver sleuth? All right, come here. I'm going to tell you what my secret is, okay? My secret to finding silver, right? You ready? Right? It's all about the socks. These are my lucky socks. silver socks. Well, you have to have the lucky silver socks, and I just so happen, okay, for you, and Tom, I have a pair. It's all in the socks. It's all in the socks. Okay. Sweet. So if you wear these socks, you may you may find silver. These are my lucky you know, silver. I, sh I should have socks. known it was something really stupendous like this. There we go. All right. Ryan has pulled out what uh, sounded like a quarter signal. That's where we're getting the hit. It's good news. Okay. Sort of putting the dirt back in. Got a little worm there. Yep. Fresh worm. Looks like some rich soil. Right. Coin? Yep. So what do you got there? Quarter? Quarter. Eagle quarter? Yep. All right. First, uh, first blood. Oh yeah, we got it. Nice. Good job, buddy. Okay, I am, of course, wearing my lucky silver socks. And what did I find? This was the hole, okay? And flipped open my plug. And we have silver, folks. 19, what is that? 50. 1950 silver here with the ORX. All right, Ryan just informed me he may have a nickel signal here. Very, very close to where I just pulled out that silver quarter. There it is. Penny, though. Could be a nickel. Huh? Looks like a normal nickel. Let me take a look at that dome on the top. I think, yeah, it's an older one for sure, but don't think it's a war nickel. Okay. Nickels are hard to find, man. Good job. 13, yeah, steady, steady consistent signal. I see why people struggle with that. Okay, this was an erratic signal in the 90s, and now we know why. Looks like we found a pen knife or Part of a pocket knife, I should say, not a pen knife, a little larger than a pen knife, but one half appears to be missing. But cool find. Here, pretty windy, I know, but uh, I won't be able to read the date. But that's an Indian head penny we just got out of this hole right here. So that was ringing up really low, really low, like um, on my ORX, I believe it was like 85, but. Uh, that indeed is an Indian head penny. Got the silver walk going. 
We got silver in the hole. Let's take a look. A Merc. A Merc. What year? I can't even read it. I'm glad we trust 1938. Ooh. 1938. Sweet. The, the cool thing about the Merc Dimes, a lot of people don't know this. So do you notice how the back is more worn yeah. than the front? It's because the relief, the, the, the coin, the edge of the coin on the back was shorter. Oh. So it just so would naturally. It wore more. It wore more. went through machines and. Absolutely. Yeah. What, did, what did you guys find? An Indian head penny? Indian head penny oh. and a uh, silver Jesus. quarter. Excellent. Nice. Good job, man. Nice. Cool. That's a cigarette case. <laughs> I oh my gosh! Look at that, Park Sherman Springfield. I would think so. Don't you think that yeah, is exactly yeah. what it is? It's a cigarette holder, and you know what, Bruce? Yeah, cool, I think. Dirt, oh, just dirt. Yeah. You opened it up already. <laughs> and, and Bruce is like me. He'll have that polished up, and he'll research every little yep. inscription on there. <laughs> I, I almost stood there and said, "Okay, let me Google it." But that'll All right, we got another silver here. Okay, and this time, what are we? Oh, what are we looking at there? I know what that is. Is that a? That's a barber. Oh no, my God! Yeah, that's a bar recorder. 1908, and it's in phenomenal shape, man. Look at that. This is what I love about the bar recorder. Look at the back. The obverse has this beautiful eagle on it. I found a 1907 one uh, last summer in the river. Beautiful 1908. I've never one that is sweet. A sweet one. Okay, I'm not quite sure what this is that I pulled out of here. See here, it was uh, a couple inches down. The signal, I think, was around 92, 93. That's uh, what I would normally get for a dime. Could have been a penny, but it's a cylinder here. And there is some writing on it. I'm not sure if that's a lipstick case a match holder of some sort, but it's got some fancy on there. That'll be something to uh, investigate for sure. So after some research, Mrs. History Digger discovered that the first cosmetic lipstick wasn't manufactured until roughly around 1884. And it was after that in 1915 that Maurice Levy of the Scoville Manufacturing Company invented the metal tube container for the lipstick. It was a little different than the tubes we know today. It had a lever on the side that lowered and raised the lipstick. Levy called his invention the Levy tube. Coincidentally, I also last week found an incredible item in my backyard, which turned out to be a Wisconsin Civil War button manufactured by none other than the Scoville Button Company. Mrs. History Digger contacted Hillary from the Makeup Museum and confirmed that this item is a Dewberry lipstick container with the patented caplet case. They were available during the mid-1930s through the mid-1950s. What an interesting find. A big shout out and thank you to Hillary from the Makeup Museum. Check out her webpage. She could be found on Pinterest or on Facebook. Okay, let me show you what we're looking at here. So first of all, I'm gonna show you where we are. We're pretty close here to the banks of the Fox River. I have a signal right here. And it was a bit jumpy, low 90s. Is this a ring? Is this a pull tab? Is it a piece of hardware? I don't know. Oh, I think it's gonna be a pull tab. Darn. Rats, we were foiled. I just found this uh, wheat penny here. Sorry about the lighting. A wheat scent. We got the sheaths, the two sheaths of wheat. Uh, it says one cent, right? It's gonna be 100% copper. Okay, and the date will be on the bottom right. Let's see if we can get a date off of this. Wow, pretty tough. We'll have to take a look at that Late to get her cleaned up. Okay, we've been at it for a while. It's starting to warm up here. The sun has come out, so that's a blessing. 
so is this signal that I have right here. It's looking looking like it could be a modern quarter, maybe silver range. Let me show you what I'm looking at. Okay, we're looking at something that's a solid 94, 95. Um, dime quarter, maybe? Let's find out. Well, we found a ring. Okay, I'm super pumped. One of the first coins I dug today, I looked at it, thought it was a coin, wasn't sure, it wasn't identifiable. Um, pulled it out of the pouch a little while ago. It's dried up, sun's come out, and it is actually a large scent. I believe this is an 1858 large scent. It's my first large scent. So, um, uh, silver coin, some of the other guys have found silver. So, what a great location, super appreciative to have been invited on this permission by my friends Bruce and Tom. So, there we go. Okay, I'm at, again, I'm at the water's edge. I found something kind of unique. I think it just could be an old sinker. Let's take a look at it. Let me show you what I'm looking at. Okay, so here we are. This is the item right here. Right, I don't know. It's on a piece of a, of a wire. You know, I think this is just some type of homemade old fishing sinker. I doubt there'll be any writing on there, but wow, somebody fashioned that and uh, may have been fishing with that. Pretty cool. So we did dig some clad, quite a few Lincoln Memorial pennies. I think one of these is copper. And um, I did dig one I think one wheat scent. Um, three clad dimes right here. Some other trash here. This is an older, looks like homemade fishing weight. A few other sinkers and uh, spinners. I'm not quite sure what this is. This could be part of a flashlight. At first I thought it might be a battery. We have not been able to discern what that is. An old belt buckle, that was at location number two. Very heavy piece of iron. I don't have a clue what that is. Looks like a little bit of hardware, a pocket knife. Very large bullet. My buddy also found one of those as well. Very, very interesting case. I think this might be a lipstick case. Not 100% sure. There is some writing on here. I'm going to get that cleaned up. We will learn more about that. You'll probably see that in the video. A, uh, an Indian head penny here, right? That was a wonderful find. And a nice silver quarter, a nice silver quarter. And of course I have it in my pocket. I don't have it laid, laid out here, but I think this might have actually been my first find of the day, but this is a toasty large scent right there. That's the head on there. We'll go ahead and get a better photo of that, but um, I think that was 1858, 1853, 1858, something like that. So there you have it.